This problem refers to a demonstration that was done in class. If you swing a bucket of water over your head in a vertical circle, you won't get wet as long as you swing it fast enough. Explain the physics that is responsible for this observation. So the way Newton's laws apply here is that Newton's third law says that the sum of the forces acting on the water have to add up to ma. And the a in this particular case is the centripetal acceleration due to the motion in a circle. So if you have motion in a circle like this, at the top, the acceleration vector points towards the center of the circle, in this case down. So as long as you can swing it fast enough that your acceleration, the radial component of your acceleration, is equal to or greater than v squared over r, if your v is fast enough, then we know that the water won't dump out over your head. So just to keep in mind, I'm not writing here what I expected you to write to get points. What I'm writing here is just putting a couple of equations and diagrams with the words that I'm saying. So what I would expect is just a couple of sentences that explain that the radial acceleration, the radial component of the acceleration points down, it's equal to v squared over r, and this has to be greater than or equal to the acceleration due to gravity. If you can swing it fast enough, then basically gravity does not have sufficient time to pull it out of the bucket. And we can take that result and apply it to the next problem. You're moving this thing in a vertical circle. It starts here and goes here. The total distance that it has traveled is equal to half of the circumference. The circumference is 2 pi r. Half of that is just equal to pi times r. And we can solve for the velocity because this radial acceleration has to be greater than or equal to g. So if we set it equal to that, we find that the velocity at the top has to be equal to the square root of g times r. This is the tangential velocity that it has to have at the top. And so the question is asking you for the tangential acceleration. And it's telling you that it's constant. Constant acceleration means use one of those four equations that relate the position, the velocity, and the acceleration when the acceleration is constant. So the velocity, the tangential component of the velocity at the bottom is equal to zero. Up here at the top, it better be at least that square root of gr. So what equation is going to relate all these things? The equation that relates all these is v squared is equal to v naught squared plus 2a x minus x naught, but in this case that's just the distance d. The x's here refer to the tangential component of the velocity. So here is your v tan. So v tan squared is going to be gr. v naught was 0. It said it started from rest. And we have 2 times a tan, which is what we want to solve for, times the distance d, which is pi r. And then you can go ahead and plug in all your numbers, and you'll find that a tan comes out to be something like 1.56 meters per second squared. Okay, the projectile motion problem. Um, people did very well on this. The key to doing well on a problem like this is drawing a nice big diagram so you can fill in everything you need to know and figure out the things that you don't know. It does not tell us how fast the clown was going. It's asking us for the initial speed. This represents the initial velocity vector. The magnitude of your initial velocity vector is the initial speed. So we want to find v naught. And we can find that by relating the quantities that we are given. So this is the height at which the clown was fired out of the cannon. There is the opening of the cannon. It is some distance above the ground. And it says here the opening of the cannon is 17 meters above the net in which he lands. That 17 meters refers to this distance. Okay, So our y naught is equal to 17 meters. Our v naught is unknown. Our angle is 48 degrees. 
x naught, we can just call it equal to 0. And we can find the components of the initial velocity vector. So the x component, v naught x, is equal to v naught cosine of 48. And the y component of the initial velocity is equal to v naught times the sine of 48. OK, so here we've got enough information that we can actually figure out how to find, um, how to solve for v naught. That's ultimately what we want. We're given information about the height, and we're given information about the time, which means let's use the y component that uses the, the distance in the y direction and the time. And what equation is that? It's this one. y is equal to y naught plus v naught y times t plus one half a y t squared. Okay, so he lands on the ground. The y is zero. See, he does this basically. Plunk. Here, y is equal to zero. T is two point five seconds later, and it says that in the problem. Um, he starts at a height of seventeen meters. V naught y is equal to v naught times the sine of 48 times the time, which is 2.5 seconds, plus the acceleration term 1 half negative 9.8 times 2.5 squared. And you solve all that out, and you find the distance. For the second part, we're basically doing the same thing We've figured out what v naught is. So here's, I'll just resketch the diagram. Here's the initial velocity. He does this, he lands on the ground. This is y is equal to 0. x is unknown at this point. He started here. OK, he started here. It took 2.5 seconds to get here. This is a height of 17 meters. y naught is equal to 17. x naught is equal to 0. And we want to find out how far he went. This it turns out to be just distance equals speed times time, but if you forgot the equation, you can always just revert back to the original, which is this, v naught x times t plus 1 half ax t squared a in the x direction, the acceleration in the x direction is equal to zero. Gravity doesn't affect the horizontal direction. t is still equal to 2.5 seconds, because that's the distance that he went. v naught x is going to be equal to the v naught that you got in the step before times the cosine of that angle. Okay, that's v naught x. So you multiply these things together, and turns out that that is your distance, because x naught is equal to 0. We just set that equal to 0.